Uh, recall, May is National Ruritan Month, and Faith Hall joins us this morning. Faith, pull that microphone just a little closer to you there so we can hear your lovely voice. Good morning to you. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, which Ruritan do you favor? I am with the Tomahawk Ruritan Club in Back Creek Valley. How many Ruritan clubs are there in the area? Uh, in Zone 1 for the Potomac District, there are five. There's Marlowe, Beddington, Tuscarora, Tomahawk, and South Jefferson. And the one you, re- you uh, belong to, is it largely where you reside? Yes. Can you cross over to be a member of a different Ruritan oh, club? Oh, absolutely. You can go to any clubs in any area that you choose. Yeah, I was going to say, if they freed up the high school restrictions for athletes that you can place, <laughs> why not the Ruritan restrictions, too? Do the Ruritans get together and play each other in softball or anything? No, we don't. We try to help each other out with fundraisers and things like that. Okay. What exactly is the purpose of a Ruritan club? It is to provide community service. It was founded in 1928 as a means for farmers Mm -hmm. in the rural communities to help each other and help their fellow neighbors. And what types of things would they help them with? Well, a lot of clubs now, like in other areas, one club might specifically go in and build handicap ramps for people. Mm -hmm. When my dad was a member back in the 70s, their primary thing was going out and cutting wood to make sure that the elderly had wood for their wood stoves. That's very generous. And all clubs do things differently. You're not required to do what the other clubs do. So we all kind of have specialties. And you have some fundraisers coming up too. Yes. Would you like to highlight some of those? Um, Folks could attend. Tomahawk Ruritan Club does flea markets the third Saturday of every month, and we also do food sales. Tuscarora has a spaghetti dinner this coming Friday starting at 4.30, Mm -hmm. and their proceeds are going to the resurfacing of their basketball court Mm -hmm. on their premises, which is used by the community. Marlow does bingo. Now stay with me on this, Faith. We've got a resurfaced basketball court. Mm-hmm. We could have Ruritan Club basketball tournaments, one club <laughs> versus the next. Well, they're also... Can I you handle the rock? Can you do a little crossover? Go to the hole? Eh, maybe. <laughs> maybe a little bit? <laughs> right. They were also talking about maybe possibly lining it for pickleball. That's yeah, mm-hmm. very popular. And they were thinking, well, if we did that, then we could have, you know, competitions. Yes. I think we're on to something. Yeah. <laughs> Ruritan versus Ruritan. <laughs> <laughs> we're starting something here, Miller. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I interrupted your fundraising. I'm sorry. Um, Marlow does bingo the second and fourth Thursday of every month at 530. South Jefferson does things a little differently. They only have nine members with an average age of like 80. Oh. Um, Their fundraiser. They're not playing in the Ruritan basketball tournament then, Faith. Their uh, fundraiser is the Jefferson County Fair. They run a large concession stand down there. So members from other clubs go down and help. I'm the hamburger flipper and <laughs> nice. the bacon fryer. Um, the Boy Scouts help them. Um, if it weren't for the community reaching out and helping them, they would never be able to pull it off. Well, that's great. Uh, Faith, you mentioned the, the one in Jefferson right now, it's down to nine members. What is the average membership around the other Ruritans in the area? Uh, we're all, Tuscarora has 37. Um, two years ago, they only had 15. They've really done an amazing recruiting job. Um, our club has 27, Marlowe has 28, and Beddington has 20. Beddington's struggling. They definitely need new membership. They have a chicken barbecue coming up the last Saturday of this month. So some of our members will be going down and helping with that. Are they doing that right off Route 11 there? Yes. Yeah. You can smell that from half a mile away. (laughs) Yes. Oh, that's nice. (laughs) Yeah. Mr. Miller. It's always one of my favorite announcements. You knew when summer was coming, when we would get the sheet here and begin to announce the Beddington Roratan Chicken Chicken Barbecue. barbecue. That's right. Absolutely. Hey, by the way, I I just was jotting down, it's the May Madness Pickleball Tournament. Oh, kind of I like play on, on March Madness, but with the Ruritans. So May we're, Madness. I'm we're, we're working on it already. <laughs> we got something, Faith. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
do the Rorotans locally, um, you, you mentioned they work together. Are, are you part of like a national Rorotan organization or how does a Rorotan club kind of get started? Yeah, there's several thousand Rorotan clubs across the country. They're in 24 states. Um, very, very popular in Tennessee, Southern Virginia, Southern West Virginia. Uh, they go as far west as Missouri and as far north as New York. Wow. Um, they're all divided into zones and then districts. And like I said before, you're not under an umbrella that you have to do certain things. Mm -hmm. You're so, all free to do what you choose. So you, in <clears throat> coming in, you handed out a, a nice cheat sheet to kind of lay out what, what you all do. And I see here you focus on five categories among them. Our public service, which is law enforcement, fire and rescue, which is near and dear to my heart, um, solid waste, um, cell service and water. What what do you do in in those areas? Um, well, with the public service, we have our club has fixed up goodie baskets that we've taken to the nine one one operators. Um, this year at Christmas Eve, we did up pepperoni rolls which you guys have pepperoni rolls out in the lobby this morning oh we do wow. we didn't know that thank you um we did up pepperoni rolls chips and drinks and took into the state police barracks so they wouldn't have to eat sheets on christmas eve and christmas day um we've also taken large um snack baskets into the sheriff's department um with the um fire departments um there were recently two wildfires, one in Tomahawk, one on Buck Hill. Um, our club provided water and Gatorade on scene to the firefighters at Tomahawk. That They didn't any sooner get back to their stations than they got called out to the fire up on Buck Hill. So a couple of us got together. We got with local businesses, got lunch meat, bread, <coughs> made sandwiches, and we went to the mountain and we were walking the roads handing sandwiches and waters out to the firefighters. That's well, on their behalf, thank you very much. That's, that's a lovely thing to do. How do you get that organized in a hurry? So you have a scanner and then, hey, these guys are going to need... No, we're all pretty much retired. So, you know, we're our club is a spur of the moment. We see a need and we jump into it. A lot of clubs write checks us we're totally hands-on faith all our guests here on the program it it says in your uh information here faith that you're looking to start a couple of new clubs too south berkeley and in berkeley springs as well have, have yes. there ever been clubs in those areas there was one in south berkeley a couple of years ago yeah, I thought so. um it did not last very long you've got to have strong leadership mm -hmm. to make them survive and there has been talk of the one in Berkeley. I'm not involved with that. Berkeley Springs? Right. I am trying to get some people in South Berkeley together to get another club established there. You mentioned you had a club that had 15 a couple of years ago and now is up to 37. Uh, what was the key in making that club grow? And what is the challenge in bringing in younger members? Um, John Everson took over the Tuscarora Club mm -hmm. a few years ago, and he started a um, basically a campaign to get new members in and did an amazing job. Several of the clubs have young members. Um, Marlo has a young girl that's been a member since she was probably seven, and well. she's now 14 now, so she's been there quite a year. She's She's also a director of that club. At 14? Yes. God bless her. Yes. Um, Tomahawk has three young members. Mm -hmm. um, we have an 11-year-old, a 12-year-old, and a 10-year-old. And they mainly come in and help with activities that we have with children that they can interact with with younger children. Okay. And nationwide, there are <coughs> 20,000 Muritans? Yes. Yeah, it, it, was it a time when there were a hundred thousand Ruritans across the country, or oh. was it five? I mean, are you growing nationally right now, or are you, are you trying to hang on? It's it's a struggle. Um, it seems like you get one club up, 
and another club fails. And that's just, it's a recruiting issue because most of these clubs were started in the 40s and the 50s. And, you know, we're now in our 60s, 70s, sure. 80s, and 90s, and you can't keep going at that age. You have mm -hmm. to get these younger people in. It's funny, the more our community grows, the less involvement there is in these mm -hmm. sorts of things. The less rural you become, the right. more urban you become, the less volunteers that you have. And that goes back to, you know, we're bedroom communities now. People are commuting yeah. to the cities. They don't get home till six o'clock at night. Their kids are in sports. They don't want to give up their weekends because they have to mow the grass. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. You know, it is a struggle. Life has challenges. Yes. Yeah. When you're doing recruiting, are there any specific things that you're looking for? Are there um, any, I don't want to use the word dues because that brings with it the idea of money, but, you know, the, the, kind of an application process, if you will, to be involved? You have to be invited. Okay. Um, <clears throat> our meetings are always open to anybody that wants to come in. And, you know, we encourage them to come in and participate in our activities before they make a final decision if they want to become a member. Do you I, folks get politically involved, Faith? We are nonpartisan. Um, me personally, I love politics, and we always have a candidate's forum right. at our club. And uh, it gets a little heated. But <laughs> I heard you had a lively one this year. I am of the belief <laughs> that... If you're going to run for political office, uh, you got to take the heat. In regards to recruiting new volunteers, how many hours a week slash month could a person expect to volunteer and do things, be active? <sighs> I like, we try to limit our activities like for fundraisers for one a month, which if I can get four hours out of someone, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. Right now, Tomahawk's in the middle of Little League concession stands that we run at Rooney Park. So that's Monday through Friday and all day on Saturdays. So this time of year, I put in about 40 hours a week. You're doing that yourself. Mm -hmm. And then with the other members, we request that they work one evening a week and every other weekend. And you have some scholarships you folks give away, too. Yes. Yeah, how do you apply for a Ruritan scholarship? Um, each of the Ruritans puts their um, applications online. The Jefferson Ruritan, several years and years ago, they had bought a piece of property in Jefferson County to put a building on. They decided not to put a building because of some codes and things they weren't allowed. So they sold that property a few years ago, took all the proceeds, put it into the Eastern Panhandle Community Foundation oh. for a perpetual scholarship should that club ever fold. And this year they gave out $8,000 in scholarships. That's impressive. Um, Marlowe gave out 2,500, Beddington 25, uh, Tuscarora 3000 and Tomahawk gave out 2000 Are these lump sums or are they a series of $500 or $1,000 scholarships? And Tuscarora such? or South Jefferson starts out with a $1,500 scholarship. If you maintain a 3.0 in your chosen field, every year it's renewable for another $1,500. That's great. Yeah, they did an amazing job with that. And does that go to one student all the way through for the four years, or does it, what, is it one student a year? Um, they do one student every year, so at any given time, they could be giving out four $1,500 scholarships every year. Well, that's nice. We just had Jacob Witt on from the Shepherd University uh, mm -hmm. Financial Aid Office, and the you know, cost of putting kids through school is a little bit higher than it used to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the good thing is we started a couple years ago it doesn't necessarily have to be a college. It can be James Rumsey. Mm -hmm. It can, you know, any technical college that you want to go to. <clears throat> so, you know, because not everybody's cut out for college. Do you have enough kids applying for these scholarships? We do. Uh, Tuscarora had 18 this year. I know we had 10, I believe. And the sad part of that is, with Hedgesville, I know, I think they said that only 17% of 
of the seniors apply for scholarships. How do you make it known that these scholarships are available? Um, they're on the school websites. They're on all the Ruritan pages that they can go on and apply for them. We advertise <clears throat> ours as well that they can go on and apply. Do you all go through the foundation or do some of you distribute independently? No, we, um, South Jefferson's the only one that goes through the foundation. We all do our own grading process and you know it's based on income number of children in the home and do you volunteer in your community mm -hmm. well those are all important factors in making it a community yeah right so uh what's next what's what's the very next thing you folks are doing right now oh my we're going to be helping beddington with our chicken barbecue um south jefferson i'll probably swing over to Tuscarora Friday evening and help serve some spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> That's never a bad idea, Faith. Yeah. No. Right? Or do you answer to a state organization that oversees you, or is each Ruritan answerable only to itself? Um, we have the National Ruritan, which is located in Holland, Virginia. And there's nothing statewide that you have no. to uh, adhere to? No. And is there any... Uh, coordination between the local Ruritans, I think you said there are five, so that you're not stepping on each other's toes or repeating the same fundraiser? I'm the zone governor for this area. That's a great title, by the way. <laughs> um, we don't really step on each other's toes because everybody does something different. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know Beddington struggles, and you're not going to get rich off of chicken barbecues. So I told you them. You will get full, though. <laughs> yes. You know. We're looking at trying to encourage clubs to try different fundraisers. Mm -hmm. My club, 98% of our profits come from food sales. With the Little League and such. <laughs> yeah. Right? And we do chicken and dumplings and country ham and dumplings and soup and sandwich sales. And we never shut down during the pandemic. Is there any relationship between Civitan and Ruritan? The names are so similar. I am not for familiar with Civitan okay. clubs. All right. Is there a national Ruritan convention? Yes. <laughs> Where is it this year? Uh, this coming year, it will be in January, and it will be in South Carolina. Are you going? Absolutely. I went to my first one this past January yeah. in Winston-Salem. How many other governors attend these things? Um, I would probably say about 80, 90. Do you pick up new fundraising ideas? You do. We have events all through the year. They have leadership conferences, which I'll be going to in July. And it's just sharing ideas. Mm -hmm. What is the Jefferson Ruritan doing actively to try to get more members and to get younger? Besides they, lying about their birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> they have this you know large group of followers but nobody wants to commit to joining and we got to change that <laughs> i have no idea yeah. <laughs> that's still a work in progress it is the political season you said you you do enjoy politics and and so forth um, as the the governor of the zone is that a position that you run for uh, does it last for a certain term and and then others may want to jump into that position it's for one year okay um basically nobody else wanted it last year and they have Ruritan National has been trying to encourage me for several years now to step up out of my comfort zone at Tomahawk and move up the ladder. And you took them up on it. Yeah, so this is step one. And you enjoying it? I, mean, I love it. Yeah. I love getting out and meeting other clubs. And I know in the past that it's kind of funny because Tuscarora is an all men's club. And the rumor was, you know, they didn't like outsiders coming in, but I love going there, and we, we, have, we have a blast. Yeah. That's because you're the boss. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Robin Townsend says. Yeah, you're, you're the I'm boss. actually, <clears throat> pardon me, headed to the Tuscarora meeting on Monday. Uh, they meet this Monday and going to mm -hmm. talk with them about Fellowship of Christian Athletes. So, mm -hmm. yeah, looking forward I, to I that. I will be there. I try right. to go to 
all club meetings. Yeah. Faith, we're just about out of time. How can people get in touch with you about more information regarding Ruritan or maybe even becoming a member? Um, my phone number is 301-730-3801. Or you can go on the Ruritan National website and just type in Ruritan National and they will hook you up with either me or one of the local clubs. Thanks for coming by, Faith. Always a pleasure to Thank see you. Thank you. And best of luck. Can you run? Can you run for re-election after your one year? Oh yes. All right. You can uh, establish a dynasty. Yeah right. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's uh, almost ten o'clock here, and remember, we go until eleven o'clock today.